Jesus says, I am the bread sent from you through God most high. Take and eat and you will live. You need never fear to die. I receive. You can find the readings for today's Mass by opening up our worship aid at www.seaseton.org. We're singing Psalm 23 today. It is 1,173 in the hymnal. Please sing it after me now. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Our Mass today is celebrated by Father Sue assisted by Deacon Jack McCabe. As we begin Mass, please take a moment to silence your mobile devices and come to a quiet awareness of God's presence here, remembering the needs of our loved ones and our world, and thanking God for his many blessings. Please stand now and welcome each other by name to this celebration. Our opening hymn is number 563, At the Lamb's High Feast, number 563. Oh, 536, my apologies.
together in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together on this Lord's Day, we come to join together in prayer. We come to be refreshed at the table of the Lord. Also on this particular Sunday, we pray in a special way for those who are uh, in need of peace this week, those in Israel and Palestine who are faced with war. We pray for peace throughout the world. We pray for an end to violence. And coming together now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace, to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I invite our young people participating in the children's liturgy of the word to come forward along with their catechists. Got a quite a cute, quite a crowd today. Who's holding the book today? All right, here we go. We got a volunteer. Wonderful.
my dear, my dear young friends, we invite you now to listen to these words of God telling us about this wonderful banquet that he invites us to. And so we invite you to listen to these words and join us when you come back at the altar of the Eucharist. For now, go in peace. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people, peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines. Juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing and green o'er the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me, he revives my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. guides me along the right path for the sake of his name. Though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death, no evil would I fear for you are with me. Your crook and your staff will give me comfort. I shall live prepared a table before me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I know how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I can do all things in him who strengthens me. Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. My God will fully supply whatever you need in accord with his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father, glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Christ, enlighten the eyes of our hearts, that we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast but they refused to come. A second time, he sent other servants saying, tell those invited, behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed and everyone is ready, come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, bind his hands and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is an apocryphal story about a minister preaching fire and brimstone in his church. At one point, he begins to talk about what will happen for those who don't listen to God, how they will be uh, thrown out in the cold, where they will be wailing and grinding a teeth. Now, at this point, there was somebody in the congregation that just started laughing. A little confused, the preacher looked around and found this older parishioner and asked, what was so funny? To which the parishioner replied, well, I don't think I have to worry about that since I have no teeth. <laughs> and without, beating a, uh, without, without missing a beat, that pastor responded, teeth will be provided. <laughs> As we get closer to the end of the liturgical year, our scripture readings at Mass will begin to shift more and more towards this topic of the end times. Now, there are some few, few temptations when we read these particular scripture passages. Temptations to draw analogy for every symbol there is and to take every imagery very literally. To take certain descriptions beyond their intended meanings by the scriptures. When we read these passages, it's important for us to remember that they're not meant to scare the listeners as much as they are to reassure the people of faith, reassure the listeners who oftentimes were being persecuted, were facing some difficulties and challenges. And these passages are meant to give them a vision, give them an idea of what is to come, that their sufferings and their challenges are not the end, but there's something greater, to give encouragement and hope during very difficult times for people of faith. Today, we have one of these passages as Jesus gives his parable of the king's banquet. Now, this particular passage follows a series of parables we've been hearing in the last few weeks where Jesus has been challenging the religious leaders of the time in the way that they have led God's people, calling them out for their lack of integrity in the way that they live, saying yes on the surface, but in reality, not actually carrying out what they said yes to, saying that these religious leaders are complacent in such a way that they really only follow the faith as if it's a checklist rather than a, uh, a true transformation, a true uh, decision of the heart. So that's the context of today's passage. Jesus continues to challenge the religious leaders. Now, as we look at the parables today, our first thought is probably to think about who we are in the passage. Are we the original invited guests? Are we the ones who, brought, who were brought in from the streets? Are we the ones who dressed appropriately or inappropriately for the feast? Now, historically, there's something to be said about uh, this particular form of uh, the particular sort of way of reading the scripture through identification for this passage. Because the Gospel of Matthew was written, addressed to a mixed group of Christians who are both of Jewish and Gentile backgrounds. And this passage was meant to speak to them to say that there is a place for the Gentile, that everyone is part of this banquet of the kingdom of God. But beyond that message of inclusion, which is a very important one, there's a deeper message here that Jesus is trying uh, on, and that is how they approach the invitation to the banquet itself. As we hear in the parable, the king had originally invited many guests, and these would have been the important people, the ones you would expect to show up to a royal wedding banquet. But when they were notified of the banquet, they came up with some really weak excuses to not be there. They ignored it, they went to their farm, they went to their business, or they simply killed the messenger. 
And then we have all these people that were brought in from the streets. These that you would not expect it to see at a royal banquet. And when they did came in, one of them was not dressed appropriately, such that he was thrown out into the cold where they would be wailing and grinding a teeth. What is in common between this man and those original invited guests was how they failed to realize the importance of the invitation that they've been given. Neither really valued the invitation to the banquet. They all blew it off, giving it minimal efforts. And that is the message that Jesus wants to give to religious leaders at a time and to us today, challenging us to think about how we receive our invitation to that banquet of the kingdom of God. As we hear in the first reading today, this banquet is a pl plentiful banquet, a banquet where the, the choices, the best, such is the invitation, such is the magnitude of the invitation that the God is giving to us. And the reality is indeed that many are invited, not just those who are royalties or the VIPs, not just the usual suspects, not just the religious elites, but all of us. We're all invited to that banquet of the kingdom. And just as importantly, to that reality of invitation that we've been invited is that none of us deserves that invitation. God is the one who actively invites us even though we don't deserve to be there. And so, how do we respond to this invitation that we don't deserve? How do we respond with urgency rather than complacency? How do we respond as if it's the most important invitation that we would ever get, as opposed to treating it like just another invitation, just another thing on the to-do list. The invitation God gives to us to this banquet is more than just simply a one-off event, more than just something that happens a few times a year or a few minutes a week. The invitation is to be a, to this everlasting banquet. And this invitation involves us to be continuously and ever more converted to God, to ever turn more towards God day by day. And that's what we do every time we come together as a community, when we come together for the Eucharist, when we come together for the Mass, to participate, to get a foretaste in that eternal kingdom, in an eternal banquet that is to come. It's a chance for us to be reminded of the importance of the invitation that we've been given and to be renewed in our saying of the yes, not just in words, not just in that few moments that we are here together, but in our hearts and throughout our entire lives. And so in response to God's invitation, let us together respond with the words of the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty,
our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church gathered in synod, that by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this journey will be marked by humble listening, courageous speech, and lively hope. Let us pray. For an end to tensions escalating in the Middle East, that they may be transformed by the peace that comes from God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, let us pray. For full participation in the Eucharistic liturgy, that we may draw strength for our daily lives from our communion with Christ and one another in our celebration each week. Let us pray. For all with mental illness, particularly those with depression, that God's healing love will free them from their suffering and open new possibilities for them. Let us pray. and follow the gospel and give witness to their faith by their lives. Let us pray. For Mary Pat and Beth Novotny, whom we have seriously ill or hospitalized, including Bunny <coughs> Sheely, Owen Imes, Barbara Grant, Maddie Albanes, John Hill, Sierra Friend, Kim Schellerberger, and Ann Knudsen. And for those who have recently died, including Frank Arundel and Bob Keller, let us pray. For the needs of our sister parishes in Haiti and Baltimore, the intentions written in our Book of Intercessions, and for what or whom do we pray today? Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, Hear and answer the prayers we have brought before you. Our preparation hymn is number 679, Center of My Life, number 679. I will. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory to his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so, it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too exalt you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, have Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all ye have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of working the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he set the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary. Glorious martyrs, with St. Elizabeth and Seton, and with all the saints, may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes Please be seated. Our communion hymn is number 925, All Who Hunger, number 925.
Here are today's announcements. Next week, we begin our annual Thanksgiving outreach. Look for the green sheets in the bulletin on October 21st and 22nd for information. Drop-off bins and shopping lists for Spring Grove holiday outreach are in the narthex. There will be a special coffee and donut Sunday on October 29th to honor our newest parishioners. Everyone is invited. Veterans, active and retired military and Department of Defense parishioners and their spouses are invited to the 430 Mass on Saturday, November 4th for a special blessing, followed by a cocktail party in the parish hall. Information is at the, hospi at the hospitality table and in the bulletin. The fall high school retreat is coming up this October 27th through 29th. All high school youth are welcome to attend. Information contributions this week benefit Crofton Christian Caring Council. The Sacrament of the Anointing of the Sick will be available at the baptismal font after Mass with an anniversary blessing for couples married in the month of October. And now the chair of our Parish Finance Council has a special announcement. I love how this is billed as a special announcement. <laughs> I don't want anybody getting too hyped up about, you know, something special is about to happen. 
Um, I'm Joe Shepard, the chair of the Finance Council here at St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. Every October, we report out to the parish on the financial condition of, of your church. Um, we operate on a fiscal year that runs from July 1 to June 30th every year. So the numbers I'm about to give you are for the fiscal year that just ended in June. Okay? Um, and everything I'm about to talk about is also contained in a supplement to the bulletin. And the supplement also goes into uh, additional details about our outreach programs, how many confirmations we've had, how many baptisms, funerals, th that shows just how vibrant your church is. So please take a minute and look at that. Um, I always joke around that um, if, if you need a sleep aid this evening, you know, before bed, go over the numbers. That, that, that'll do it for you. That'll work. <clears throat> but uh, for the fiscal year that just ended, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton had total income for the year of one million four hundred eighty-seven thousand dollars five hundred and or excuse me one million four hundred eighty-seven thousand five hundred and twenty-five dollars um, eighty-five percent of that offertory is made up from you guys from offertory from the parishioners and our offertory income was one million one hundred seventy two thousand two hundred and thirty three dollars this past fiscal year, we were very blessed and had a one-time estate gift made to the church of $113,000. That estate gift allowed us to do several things. We upgraded the webcams that you see around the, uh, the church for um, live streaming our masses. We also were able to provide a little bit extra to our ha Haiti outreach, um, our Croft and Christian Caring Council, and to St. Gregory's Parish in Baltimore. Uh, we did rectory repairs of about $5,000. We invested in um, new liturgical vestments uh, for about three grand, and then we moved the balance into our maintenance reserves and operating savings account. Um, so the, the, the testamentary gifts really do help out and allow us to do a little bit extra. But going back to the numbers, um, to offset the income we had for the year, we had expenses of $1,438,932, which resulted in a um, surplus for the parish for the year. We enjoy having a surplus of $48,000 in our household budget. Um, for, the, for the parish, that really equates to about two weeks of operating income. It takes approximately 21 grand a week to operate our parish and our, our facilities. Um, in addition to offertory and regular budgetary numbers that I just talked about, the parish also maintains reserve accounts. And those reserve accounts are intended for maintenance needs and our outreach programs. During the year, we were blessed enough to add 103,000 to our maintenance reserve accounts, 52,000 to Haiti outreach, $45,000 to the food pantry, $16,000 for tuition assistance, um, $1,709 for the seat and stitchers, and we moved $101,000 into our operating savings account. For the same period, out of those exact same accounts, we had expenditures of $61,000 for maintenance and repairs to our facilities, $38,000 went to our sister parish in Haiti, $39,000 was for the benefit of the food pantry. $27,500 for tuition assistance for um, parishioners who are sending their kids to Catholic. For Seton Stitchers. And then $63,000 was moved from our operating savings account to support ongoing parish needs. Um, Overall, I am happy to report that, uh, and compared to other parishes within the Archdiocese, your parish is doing quite well. Um, but we are doing quite well due to the generosity and blessings we receive from you guys every day. So um, keep up the good work. Uh, I will be in the Narthex after Mass. If anybody has any questions or wants to delve any further, I'll answer anything I can. Thanks, guys. Let us pray.
we entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us share us of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now invite us to together join in praying for vocation. You can find the vocation prayer on the inside cover of the hymnal. Loving and generous God, it is you who call us by name and ask us to follow you. Help us to grow in love and service of our church as we experience it today. And give us the energy and courage of your spirit to shape its future. Grant us faith-filled leaders who will embrace Christ's mission of love and justice. Bless the parish of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton by raising up dedicated and generous leaders from our families and friends who will serve your people as sisters, priests, brothers, Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May the Father open your hearts to goodness. May the Son set you aflame with his love. May the Spirit enkindle within you the celebration of life. May the blessing of mighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. As we go out with the love of God in our hearts, we sing hymn number 680, We Walk by Faith. We walk by faith and not by spoke as none ever spoke, but we believe him near. We may not touch his hands and side, nor follow where he trod, but in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord and God, help then, O Lord, 